Hi everyone, welcome to Playful Pathways. My name is Aideen. There is a load of information out there about screen time for kids, but more and more, I feel like we need to start having some conversations around the amount of screen time that parents are having when they're looking after their children. By the end of this video, you'll know a bit more about why it is that screens can get in the way of your relationship with your child, and you'll also have a few strategies for how to put some boundaries in place around your own screen time. Before I get stuck into it though, I wanna say a massive thank you to my Patreon support Supporters. Your contributions, your suggestions, your feedback are helping us to make more videos that you guys want to see, so thank you. If you'd like to join them and become part of the community, then please have a look at my Patreon page. Right, let's get going. Now, obviously, screens are everywhere and they're a part of our daily lives, so it would be completely unachievable and, frankly, hypocritical of me to say that you should never look at your phone when you're with your child. However, as I move about my day, from riding the bus to sitting in a cafe to working with families, I can see screens disrupting or replacing too many moments that would previously have been filled with interactions between parents and children. And this really worries me. Now, I know I'm not the only one who feels this way because as I work with parents, I'm hearing from lots of them that they're feeling unsure or uncomfortable with their phone or gadget use. So why is this concerning? Well, this is more than just about nostalgia for the good old days before the internet. This is about key periods of development in childhood. And to get into this, I'm going to need to talk a little bit about the brain, so bear with me. When a baby is born, their brain has billions of neurons or brain cells, but relatively few connections. When we learn something or we have an experience or an interaction, it forms connections between these neurons in the brain. The more repetitions that we have of a particular experience or the more we practice the skills we've learned, the stronger those connections become. Ultimately, our brains become uniquely adapted to the environments that we're born into. The experiences or interactions that a baby has with its primary caregivers, so that's usually mum or dad, are the most influential factor in forming these connections, which we'll use for the rest of our lives as a kind of blueprint for how we expect the world to be. Is it a friendly and responsive place, or is it scary and dangerous? Is it a lonely place where no one is interested in them, or is it endlessly exciting and full of opportunities to learn? Around 90% of brain growth occurs in the first five years of life, so this is an absolutely critical time for children to be building those relationships and having those positive experiences and interactions that will permanently shape their personalities, behaviours and expectations of what the world is like. Screens can be significant barriers to these key moments of interaction and experience. A parent who is on their phone or on their tablet is giving less eye contact to their child. They're not listening as much to what their child is saying or tuning into the cues that their child is giving because they're distracted by the screen. A parent who is constantly on the phone is less available to encourage their child's learning or curiosity about the world around them. They're also not as sensitive or as available to comfort their child when they're upset. This parent is also missing out on opportunities to delight in their child and the child is missing out on being delighted in, which is a really essential part of forming that loving attachment that children need. As well as all the things that children are not getting because of this excessive screen time, it's important to consider what children are getting. And this can be the distinct impression that they are less important and less interesting than the phone. I once had a frustrated and angry child ask me, what are grown-ups doing on their phones all the time? Are they playing games? And I have to say that this was a bit of a light bulb moment for me because I realized that kids often don't know what adults are doing on their phones. All they can see is that mum or dad is not available to them at that time. But in the same way that we put boundaries around our children's screen time, we, the adults, need to make sure that we're practicing what we preach because whatever we do, our kids will follow. Kids will push back against a double standard. So how do we start to change this screen time habit? Well, there's no denying that phones apps and gadgets are addictive. They are designed that way, to suck us in and hold our attention. But it is always possible to retrain this reflex. Here are some things that you can start doing today. Install an app on your phone that limits your usage for certain periods of time. Deliberately leave your phone at home for trips to the park or other outings. 
have a screen-free day for everyone in the family or go one further and have a screen-free holiday. At the very least, what I would recommend is having certain times of the day that are always screen-free for everyone. These are the five times when your child really needs a connection with you. So that would be waking up in the morning, meal times, going off to school, coming home from school and going to bed. Your child needs a connection with you at these moments because they're transitioning from one state or place to another and that can be stressful for some kids. They certainly might be more prone to emotional sensitivity or difficult behavior at these times. And because of this, they need you to be fully available to help them understand and learn to regulate themselves through these moments. Now, if you take on board this advice, that's great. But it doesn't mean you have to go the other way and drop your phone anytime your child wants your attention. It is perfectly okay for you to say to them, for the next five or 10 minutes, I need to answer a few emails and then I can talk to you. But if you're going to do that, then you need to make sure that you've communicated that to your child. And most importantly, that you keep your word and give them your full attention when you said you would. What you're basically doing is setting a boundary around your screen time and sticking to it. And in doing so, proving to your child that you do what you say you're going to do. Over time, this is gonna make them less demanding of your attention while you're getting things done because they know they'll have your attention at another time. So I hope that's given you something to think about and some strategies for setting boundaries around your own screen time. If you like what we're doing here at Playful Pathways and you want to support us and become part of the community, then have a look at my Patreon page. And if you'd like to be notified when new videos are released each week, then press subscribe. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you soon. Bye.